All right, here's one thing I want to talk about. It's very interesting. Welcome back to Catalyst University, where we continue our study of plants. All right, we're going to look at ethylene. Ethylene is a really interesting molecule, um, and it's really interesting that it's used as a plant hormone um, because we really don't ever see anything like this um, in anything else, any other organism. Mammals certainly don't use ethylene, and you probably drew ethylene when you did organic chemistry. Very unusual. It's just it's the simplest alkene, but it turns out it plays a major role as a plant hormone. Okay, and we're going to look at how it functions and also how it's made. So ethylene is a biosignaling molecule. It's basically a hormone, and it's going to promote several things. Okay, number one, leaf and flower senescence. Okay, it's going to stimulate senescence of mature xylem cells in preparation for plant use. Okay. It's going to induce leaf abscission. Abscission is the process by which the leaf breaks off of the plant. It induces seed germination and it stimulates fruit ripening. All of these things basically mean that ethylene is a pro-aging agent in plants. It causes the plant to do everything to age. Okay, So ethylene is a gas. Okay, It's actually released in the plant in the gas phase. All right, so do an experiment, okay? What I want you to do is the following, and you don't have to do it. You could probably even read up on it, but I promise you it's true. What I want you to do is get two, two fruits of the same kind that are basically, that came off of the same, you know, you bought, got them at the store at the same time, but they're both unripe. They're not ripe yet. What you do is you have one, you just let it sit out on the counter. The other one you put in a concealed bag completely closed bag and just stick it either in the fridge or the or you can put it out okay it turns out that the plant releases ethylene constantly but if the if the fruit is sitting out in the open the ethylene is just going to diffuse into the air of the room which is massive compared to the bag and so it's not really going to have much of an effect it will get riper but it's not going to be very quickly the fruit in the concealed bag is releasing ethylene also, but the ethylene's trapped in the bag. So the concentration of ethylene, because the volume of the bag is smaller, the concentration is sky high. It's astronomically higher than it is of, of the fruit just sitting out on the counter. And so because the concentration of ethylene's higher in the bag, the fruit in the bag ripens much more quickly. So actually, if you want to make a fruit ripen faster, just put it in a concealed bag. Okay. Consequently, that also means it's going to go bad faster. Okay, so there's two ends of that. But ethylene is, is in the gas phase. It's used as a hormone for the plant. Okay, now what is leaf abscission? All right, leaf abscission is stimulated by ethylene. We're going to talk about another plant hormone later called abscisic acid. And you might say, well, maybe abscisic acid stimulates leaf abscission too. No, that's a mistake. Abscisic acid was once thought to stimulate leaf abscission. That's the name abscisic acid. That's actually just sort of a, a mistake that just got kept as the name that's caught up in tradition. Ethylene is what stimulates leaf abscission, and that's the process by which the leaves fall off. Okay. Now, leaf abscission involves several things. Number one, chlorophyll catabolism. And we looked in another video at the chlorophyll catabolic pathway. We saw that chlorophyll... Uh, gets degraded ultimately to some uh, red chlorophyll catabolites and primary flore fluorescent chlorophyll catabolites. But chlorophyll is going to be degraded, and at the same time, you're going to get creation of a protective cork layer. Okay, There's a cork layer that sort of is going to surround um, the place where the leaf is falling off. And then you're also going to get enzymatic digestion of the middle lamina, which is, you can see, breaking the regions holding the cell walls together. There's this split right here. That split where it's very white, sort of, be, you know, breaking into the tissue here, that white sort of streak in there, that's actually where the break is occurring. That's where the abscission is occurring. And that's also where the enzymatic digestion is, okay? There's a bunch of enzymes in there that like to degrade at things like lignin peroxidases and so forth, but they break, they help break the, the leaf off, and then the leaf just falls off. And you'll probably notice when the leaf finally does fall off closer to the winter months, um, at this sort of the junction of autumn and winter, um, the leaf doesn't really have much color to it left. That's because the chlorophyll has all been degraded at that point. Okay? And 
I mentioned in the video on chlorophyll catabolism that the reason, the, in the autumn at least, that the leaves appear reddish is because it, the first thing that's catabolized is the chlorophyll. The carotenoids, which emit in the red, orange, and yellow region of the spectrum, they are still there. Okay, they have not been degraded yet, but eventually they will be, and that's what leads to sort of the brown, kind of dead-looking color of the leaves once they fall off. So all of the pigments eventually get destroyed, and that's also stimulated by ethylene. And then the actual process of enzymatic degradation of um, the middle lamina, which causes the leaf to fall off, that's also stimulated by ethylene. So ethylene you can also consider as being seasonal. Okay? So ultimately, ethylene is made from methionine. Okay? There's a reaction called SAM synthetase. Okay, that's the enzyme that makes S adenosyl methionine, which is shown right here. S adenosyl methionine is normally the primary methyl group donor in biochemical systems. However, this time S adenosyl methionine is going to react with ACC synthase, and that stands for amino carboxycyclopropane synthase. Okay? This is going to cause a cyclopropane ring that's rather unstable. Okay, and then ACC oxidase is going to actually form ethylene using molecular oxygen. Okay, and you're going to get release of carbon dioxide and hydrogen cyanide. And that's basically how ethylene is made. But we have something referred to as the methionine cycle in plants, which is actually a little bit different than the methionine cycle that we observe in mammals. Okay, we're going to start off with methionine right here. And as we saw, it's going to react with SAM synthetase to make S adenosyl methionine. As we saw before, ACC synthase is going to, as, as we see come down here, form aminocyclopropane carboxylate or amino carboxycyclopropane. And we can see that that can react with enzyme 3, ACC oxidase, which is going to give us ethylene. Okay? When we react with ACC synthase, we're going to get methylthioadenosine. Okay? This really doesn't do much use to, to the plant, so they have to get rid of this. So the main goal is to catabolize this thing. Methylthioadenosine nucleosidase is going to kick off the purine ring. And I made a note of this at the beginning of this part of the video that this is actually guanine. Um, this is a mistake in the figure, but it's still a good figure for understanding it. Just understand this is adenine that gets kicked off. And that gives us methylthioribose. Methylthioribose is going to react with methylthioribose kinase, which is going to give methylthioribose 1-phosphate. It turns out this molecule is easily oxidizable spontaneously. It doesn't even require an enzyme. So spontaneously, we're going to kick off phosphate and bicarbonate and get off alpha-keto-methylthiobutyric acid. Okay? This is going to react with a transaminase to give back methionine, and we're going to get out an oxoacid. Okay? So that's a very important concept. And then we can react that methionine again with SAM synthetase to give us SAM. Now, another facet is one amino carboxycyclopropane can also react with another enzyme called ACC and malonyl transferase. Okay? N malonyl ACC was once thought to be a storage form for the amino carboxylate cyclopropane. However, it has been since shown that it doesn't actually act as a storage because it turns out this reaction is, for the most part, irreversible. So it's actually thought that the formation of n malonyl ACC is actually just a, an unfavorable side reaction uh, because this molecule, as far as anyone has, has discovered, it's stuck like that. It can't go back and form amino carboxycyclopropane ACC. Okay? The main reaction the plant, of course, wants is ACC oxidase, number three right here, which forms the ethylene. And this is the methionine cycle that's going to occur in plants. Now for ethylene biosignaling, we're going to talk about how this actually works. It's actually rather interesting. So we're going to look at over here where there is ethylene. Okay? So in the presence of ethylene, the ethylene will actually move through a channel in the Golgi apparatus into the Golgi's lumen. And in doing so, ethylene is going to bind to a copper 2 ion. This is very interesting, but actually it turns out that the pi electrons in the ethylene double bond can actually interact with the copper, and they can bind to this receptor. It's ETR1. And when the ethylene copper complex interact with ETR1, ultimately that's going to lead to the expression of certain genes that are what we call ethylene responsive genes. And those are going to be things that, when we talked about its function, 
leaf abscission, chlorophyll catabolism, um, enzymatic digestion of the, um, of the plant in order to make the leaf fall off. Okay, so that's about all there is. We're going to talk about ethylene. Uh, make sure to like this video and subscribe to the channel for future videos and notifications. Thank you.